What's up everybody? Welcome back. So, we are going to continue to experiment with Greninja in the Great League and in today's video, I'm going to be running it alongside Shadow Swampert. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you must have noticed that Shadow Swampert is arguably my favorite Pokemon to use in PvP and Greninja is arguably my favorite Pokemon of all time. So, I decided to put these two together and run it alongside Skarmory and honestly, I was really surprised at how well this team worked for me. Now, the structure and the strategy of this team comp is pretty similar to that of the double Mudboy line, popularized by Battle Bell. If you're not familiar with it, it consists of Skarmory on the lead with Swampert and Whiskash in the back. Obviously, we're going to be running Greninja instead of Whiskash, which isn't necessarily the same thing because Whiskash has only one weakness, which is Grass, whereas Greninja has five weaknesses, which is why it can be a little more difficult to work around. But again, the strategy is basically to lead with Skarmory and then if you don't run into a Grass type, you, ba you basically switch into Swamper to hopefully bait out the Greninja counter so that Greninja can sweep endgame. It can work the other way around as well. You can safe switch into Greninja to hopefully bait out the Swampert counter so that Swamper can sweep endgame. But either way, like I said, this team worked really well for me. I managed to go 5-0 once and 4-1 and thrice with three sets of battles that I did with this team. And honestly, both of these can be absolutely fantastic closers, right? They just hit like a truck towards endgame. And uh, yeah, there was some really fun battles in here. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, moving on to the first battle here. I'm going to be leading with Skarmory with Shadow Swampert and Greninja in the back. So we have Skarmory into an Azumarill. Pretty neutral matchup. I'm going to stay in for a bit and then switch out. I'm going to actually build up to a Brave Bird here. Let's see what they decide to do. Uh, they are, they've done about six bubbles right now. So I know it's just an Ice Beam or a Play Rough. So I'm not going to shield this. Uh, probably going to be an Ice Beam, which is going to hit for neutral, but it's fine. So I'm going to go for the Brave Bird here. And irrespective of whether they shield or not, I'm immediately going to safe switch into my Swampert because I have to switch out, right? Just in case they have a Grass in the back. So I'm going to switch into my Swampert here and then try and go for the Hydro Cannon as soon as possible. So I'm just going to throw it immediately, putting massive pressure on this Azumarill to shield because this is going to take it out even though it's resisted. It does get the shield, which is fantastic. And I think it's also a CMP tie, which is really good for us. So I'm definitely going to shield this because Shadow Swampert is extremely glassy. And the fact that they haven't switched out yet tells me they don't have a Grass in the back and they have a surf etched in the back so it's a good thing we basically baited out the greninja counter and again the thing about this matchup is because surf etched is a pure fighting type it's going to take a lot of neutral damage from the hydro cannons right even though it has access to leaf blade i'm going to shield this up because i know i can get to another hydro cannon and then surf etched is pretty glassy so a hydro cannon from a shadow swamper it can near one shot it from full health so i'm just gonna go for the hydro cannon here and like i said this is probably gonna one shot it from this range which is really good because we win back switch advantage at this point azumarill is gonna come in farmers down so i'm gonna come in with skarmory to basically soak up this charge move uh doesn't matter what it is i'm just gonna soak it up probably just gonna be an ice beam or even if it's a hydro pump i don't really care it's just an ice beam so it's fine and then now i'm gonna completely farm this azumarill down right and now we have a sky attack i'm just gonna throw the sky attack at whatever comes in next and it's a scrafty so it's a good thing we got off the sky attack because greninja is gonna have a hard time beating this crafty so immediately gonna switch into greninja here and i'm really hoping that i can get off the surf as soon as possible we're taking so much damage from counters but luckily i was able to get to the surf just in time it's gonna take out the uh, scrafty there so i couldn't have gone for night slash because that's double resisted and that was extremely close. You can see how glassy Greninja is. Even like four or five counters came close to taking it out. And if I hadn't landed the sky attack, then, you know, we would have been, we would have been in trouble, right? So, yeah, pretty close battle there. But once again, Shadow Swampert is a safe switch. In my opinion, it's arguably one of the best safe switches in the Great League. So, we have Skarmory into a Snorlax. Pretty good matchup, actually, because we're resisting most of Snorlax's charge moves, except for Superpower. But yeah, I'm just going to stay in for a bit and then go for the Sky Attack here. Let's see if they want to shield this. I definitely have to eventually switch out of this matchup because that's basically the strategy for the Steam Comp. So I'm just going to soak up a couple of Body Slams. They are over farming quite a bit. So I'm going to have to basically soak up like two Body Slams here. So the first Body Slam is going to come through. Uh, it is resisted, obviously. And then I'm going to wait for them to throw their next one, which is fine. I'm just going to not shield this. I'm just going to soak it up and then immediately switch into my Greninja here. So this time I'm going to actually switch into Greninja because we're resisting the lick damage because of, the, because of the dark typing. I was trying to get off the Night Slash as quickly as possible, but unfortunately they're able to get to a charge move first. So I'm going to shield this and then I'm going to try and completely farm the Snorlax down. And they're still staying in, which tells me they don't really have a Greninja counter in the back. And we're able to farm it down, but they actually have a Stogakiss in the back. But this is really good, right? Because we have two Surfs right now. And this is the positive thing about Greninja with an energy advantage, right? The first Surf gets the seal. I'm going to go for the second Surf here. Again, because Greninja has such a high attack stat, this is going to do massive neutral damage to the Stogakiss. It does about 60% of Togekiss's health, which is pretty significant, right? We also got a shield as well. So obviously going to come in with Skarmory and throw the Sky Attack as quickly as possible. I'm really hoping they let this go through because, again, Swampert doesn't have a great matchup against Togekiss either. So they let it go through and they have an Alolan Graveler in the back and this is GG's. This is like 
Swampert is a wall to Alolan Graveler because both electric and rock moves are resisted, while ground type moves would hit, would hit for double super effective damage, right? So again, Shadow Swampert in most scenarios, if you don't have a counter for it, it can absolutely sweep endgame for the most part there. So again, this was an example of Greninja's the safe switch. I mean, it's a good thing that we switched into Greninja. I'm not sure why they didn't bring their Alolan Graveler, but I guess we had that anyways with Swampert in the back. So uh, yeah, we have Grand Bull on the lead, but they make a switch into their regular Stunfist. So I'm going to go into Swampert here. This is really good because Swampert is basically my only counter to a uh, Unova Stunfist because even Greninja would struggle against it as well. So I'm going to over farm a little bit and then throw the Hydro Cannon here. And then, uh, yeah, this is obviously going to hit for super effective because of that ground typing. Does get the shield there. So again, I'm going to try and go for another one. They're able to get to a charge bomb. I'm not going to shield this. Even if it's mud bomb, it's fine. But they actually go for discharge. I'm not sure why because that's resisted. Might as well go for mud bomb because that's going to hit for neutral. So again, going to over farm a little bit and then throw the hydro cannon here. Um, and if this goes unshielded, it's going to take it out as it does there. And then I'm expecting the grand bull to come back in and I'm going to go for another hydro cannon. This is exactly why we over farm because. I wanted to get off another Hydro Cannon and again, Grand Bull is so glassy that it's gonna, yeah, it's basically gonna get the shield from the Grand Bull. As expected, now we have a two shield advantage and a switch advantage. This is pretty much GG's at this point. So I'm gonna go for the Sky Attack here. Obviously gonna hit for neutral damage in this matchup. And it's gonna come close to taking it out, almost takes it out actually. But they make a switch into their Skarmory, I'm, go, I'm going into Greninja here. And Greninja should be able to handle this matchup, right? Especially with the two shield advantage. Uh, yeah, we should be able to handle it. So I'm going to shield this up, obviously, because Greninja can't take a charge move, basically. So I'm going to go for the Surf. Again, both Night Slash and Surf are neutral, but obviously Surf does a little bit more damage. And then I'm hoping that I can get off a Night Slash before they can get off another Sky Attack. And yeah, I'm able to get off another Night Slash here. This is going to take out the Skarmory, and this is GG. So at this point, we still have a full health Skarmory in the back. So there's not a lot that Grand Bull can do. We have a shield as well, but Grand Bull goes down to Bubble. I mean, you can just see how much damage Charm did. One Charm did about 20 to 25% of Greninja's health, which is pretty scary. But yeah, luckily, you know, we sort of, they had like one HP left and we still had a Skarmory in the back anyway. So we had that for the most part. So moving into the next battle here, I believe this is the fourth battle. We are three and oh in the set right now. So we have Skarmory into an Alolan Marowak. Not a good matchup, but the good thing is we have two Alolan Marowak counters. So we're going to save switch into my Swampert and we bait out the Breloom, right? Greninja definitely does not want to go up against this thing. Uh, so it's a good thing we baited it out. So I'm, I'm actually going to shield this and I'm going to build up a little past the Sludge Wave and then throw the Hydro Cannon here. So I'm going to actually bait with Hydro Cannon. This is probably going to get the shield from the uh, Breloom. Does get the shield there. So now I'm going to go for the Sludge Wave. Right now Sludge Wave is going to one-shot the Breloom because it's super effective. Because of that grass typing, I'm hoping they let it go through. But they do shield that. This is not great because I really want to maintain switch advantage right now. But it's not terrible either. So I'm going to come in with Skarmory and farm this Breloom down. Now Skarmory is doing double super effective damage to Breloom because of that fighting and grass typing. And I'm just going to completely farm it down here. And then let's see what... Yeah. Expecting the Alolan Marowak to come in, so I'm immediately going to switch into Greninja and they have a Gal Galarian Stunfisk in the back. This is great, right? Because now both Galarian Stunfisk and Alolan Marowak kind of struggle against Greninja. So Greninja has a pretty sort of open path to sweep the end game there. So I'm going to go for the Surf here. I'm going to try and bubble it down. Definitely going to shield this because I'm, uh, a charge move from the Galarian Stunfisk could definitely do more than any of the charge moves from Alolan Marowak would. So I'm going to farm it down and hopefully I can get off a Surf right now. And again, Surf is going to do massive, super effective damage to the Alolan Marowak. It's going to do almost as much damage as a Hydro Cannon from a Shadow Swampert would, or almost, yeah, probably a Hydro Cannon from a regular Swampert, you would say. So I'm going to try and bubble down here. Doesn't matter, we don't have any shields, but if it's a Shadow Bone, it's not going to take us out. It's going to come close to taking us out, but again, we survive, and we should be able to bubble down there. So once again, Greninja coming in super handy to, I mean, in being able to sweep endgame. The fact that most people like to have Galarian Stunfisk, Alolan Marowak, etc. in the back, um, makes it a really positive sort of situation, right? Uh, so let's move into the final battle of the set. Uh, we have Scarberry into a Sunny Cherim. So this is, again, a pretty... It's a pretty good thing that we caught this thing on the lead because the backline would really struggle against it. But Cherim actually does well against Scarberry too, right? Because it has access to Weather Ball, which hits for super effective because of the Steel typing. And I can definitely let the first one go through because we can definitely survive one of those. Definitely gonna have to shield the next one. So I'm going to go for the Sky Attack here, and this is going to one-shot it if it goes unshielded. I'm expecting them to shield this because, again, the thing about Cherim is that it's just so spammy. It's just so annoyingly spammy, right? So, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to shield this because I have to preserve the health on my Skarmory. And then hopefully I can get off a Sky Attack here. And unfortunately, they're able to get off another Weather Ball. So this is what's really annoying about Cherim. So I'm going to shield this up as well. And now I'm like really hoping that I can farm this thing down, right? So I'm going to try and farm it down, but they're able to get to another Weather Ball. So I'm like, what is going on here? 
So again, Cherem is just so spammy right now. So it's going to take out my Skamri. This is not a great situation to be in because we have Shadow Swampert and Greninja in the back with a shield disadvantage. And also we've lost switch advantage. So I'm going to come in with Swampert obviously and completely mud shot farm this Cherem down. And we have so much loaded energy right now. Let's see what they have in the back. They come in with this cash. Now this is pretty good for us because now we have two back to back hydro cannons. The first one is probably going to get the shield from the Viscash as a no, actually they let that go through. So I'm going to go for the second one here. Thus over 50% of Viscash is held. So this is definitely going to get the shield from it. And now I'm going to switch into my Greninja here. Uh, and let's see what they decide to do. They are, yeah, they are going to actually switch into their Galarian Stunfisk. And this is, now we're back in the game, right? Now we really have a good chance to win this one. So I'm going to go for the Surf right now. And then I'm really hoping that I can completely bubble down. But they're able to get to a charge move. This is just going to be a rock slide because it was too soon to be Earthquake. We can survive the rock slide. And now I'm going to completely farm the Stun Fist down. We're going to completely farm it down. And then again, I know Whiskash is loaded energy, but I'm going to go for the Surf as soon as possible. Again, Greninja wins CMP against Whiskash. So I'm hoping the Surf takes it out. And it does. So pretty difficult to recover from that kind of thing. I mean, especially when you lose the lead and lose shield advantage. It's very difficult, but luckily, you know... Uh, their backline, we pretty much had counters for their backline there. So, a 5 0 set, as you can see, this team is like so much fun to use. You know, I've got a lot of other battles as well. I'll probably put them together from the like, a lot of exciting battles from multiple sets of battles that I did. And I'm looking forward to using this team a lot more as well. And again, these two are absolutely amazing in being able to close out games. So, once again, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.